Good morning. On June 16th, 2024, I'm Steve Finland on behalf of the First Church. We're going to have a sermon, a song, and a prayer today. The song is going to be, I Love to Tell the Story, number 463 in our hymnal. Welcome everybody who takes the time to watch these broadcasts. And the title of the sermon is, The Seed Would Sprout. The first scripture is Ezekiel 17, to 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce bows and bear fruit, and become a noble cedar. Under it every kind of bird will live, in the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, I will accomplish it. And then we have Mark 4, 26-32. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. May God give his blessing to my interpretation today. Well, welcome to spring. Are your flowers and tomatoes growing? We have almonds, cherries, strawberries, and goji berries in our yard. It's great when you can eat things that you have grown. We have images of growing things in both of our readings today. And in both, it is God who causes the growth. In the Ezekiel passage, God tweaks off a sprig and plants it obviously a metaphor for plucking the people Israel out of Egypt and planting them in the land of Israel. The parable in Mark is even more focused on the image of growth. It is about the kingdom of God and is not Israel specific. It is a story about growth itself, telling us how growth happens through stages. Furthermore, we do not know how the growth happens. The farmer plants the seed and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The actual growth is out of his control and beyond his understanding. Rather, the earth produces of itself, and it does throw so through stages, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. He is telling us that our spiritual growth also happens through stages and is not really our own doing. As Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, it is only God who gives the growth. Now we can provide favorable conditions for growth. We can choose good soil and we can water the plant, but God gives the actual growth. And the same is true about spiritual growth. We can provide favorable conditions by choosing moral behavior, healthy habits, and spiritual focus and determination. But we don't actually cause the growth, rather we let it happen. In the parable, the growth happens while we sleep. In other words, the growth happens apart from our conscious minds and we don't control it. We may grow slowly with occasional bursts of growth at certain times without any explanation. To our surprise, we may find that we have become a tall cedar, a noble tree. Or we may be surprised that our growth seems to proceed so slowly. Jesus would say, don't worry, we've got it in hand, you'll be fine. 
I am often surprised at how slow my progress is. I am still an introvert, not a natural socializer and maker of friends. I still have to make an effort. I haven't suddenly become a glowing source of love. A few people are drawn to me, but many others I seem to be neutral to them, neither repulsive nor interesting. I've learned to accept that. I'm a book nerd and will probably remain one, but I am willing to apply the love lessons I have learned here on earth. We all are in this school of love, learning to live and work with others from diverse backgrounds. Our Father God loves all of his children. Some of you who are fathers may be self-critical, wishing you could be better at parenting. I wish to extend compassion to you. You might not have expected that being a father would come with such intense feelings. Further, the job did not come with an instruction manual. And you did not have a perfect example growing up, for who among us is perfect? There are probably some things your father did that you do not want to repeat, and many others that you do. Often your mind presents you with two principles that you have to balance carefully. You want to be firm, but also loving. You want to provide protection, but not be smothering. You want to be friendly, but also to be the adult in the room. I think these pairs of values are all good and you should keep doing your best. Trust that you will grow as a parent just as the plant in Jesus' parable grows overnight without the farmer knowing how. Hazel Scott, an internet author, says that the challenge is fostering independence while still providing a safety net. It's about guiding more than guarding, teaching rather than controlling, and learning to step back just enough to let them step forward. Phil Steiger writes about Christian parenting. One of his founding principles is respect. Respect teaches us not to treat others as unimportant. Nothing hurts a child more than being treated as if he's useless. And almost nothing encourages him more than being respected and valued. Refuse to use cruel language, whether directed toward family members in your home or outsiders. Thus do we model respect to our children. Even if your children are grown, these are good pieces of advice. It is also good advice for respecting one's friends without being controlling, standing for what you believe without being confrontational. As Jesus said, be at peace with one another. Hebrews says, pursue peace with everyone. We not only grow as individuals, our relationships can grow tall and strong like a cedar tree. What is the secret of life? It is love and growth. Go and grow in love. Flow on growing. Thanks be to God. Well, we have this little hymn, 463, I Love to Tell the Story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else would do. I love to tell the story Twill be my theme in glory To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story For those who know it best Seem hungering and thirsting 
to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, Twill be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. A never-ending story. As we continue to grow, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. From stage to stage, from one degree of glory to another, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians, into the likeness of Jesus' image. And so, let us pray. O God and Jesus, we pray that you foster our growth and that we provide you the right conditions to allow that growth to happen. Help us to learn to love. And we pray for people in our church who are mourning lost loved ones, the Almquists, the Rapolos, and the Turners. Help them all, Jesus, as they mourn their lost loved ones, not lost, but moved on to the next level. We trust them to you. We trust you to bring them to a new place that you have prepared for them, as you've said. You go to prepare a place for us. In John 14, you said, and so we should not be afraid and we should trust and we should rejoice for life goes on and growth goes on. Help these folks. Help us to become better disciples and peacemakers on earth. Help there to be some justice and peace on earth, Lord. We need more of it. We say the prayer you taught when you said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so go with God this week. Be aware that God is growing you. And trust that God is growing you even if the growth seems slow. Day by day can seem to pass slowly, but year by year seem to pass quickly. And so trust God to guide your growth. Go with God.